Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has announced tonight the names of new ministers to fill the vacancies caused by recent resignations. Dr Adam Nijelski, the current head of the National Health Fund, will be the new health minister and Professor Zbigniew Rao, the current head of the SAIMS Foreign Affairs Committee, will be the new foreign minister. The new Minister of Health will be Dr. Adam Nijelski, who is at present the head of the National Health Fund. Dr. Adam Nijelski has a PhD in economics and has been working for some time already in various branches of the public administration, offering his expertise in the field of economy. Therefore, he has tremendous experience in managing the functioning of various government institutions, like the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Justice, other ministries, and also the Social Security Administration. For the last two years, he has been head of the National Health Fund. We did follow up the early warning from the Foreign Minister, Professor Chapatovich, and we proposed already to fill this position with the same Foreign Affairs Committee head, Professor Zbigniew Rao. He is very experienced in this area and has spent many years involved in foreign policy projects. Alexei Navalny, a leading Russian opposition activist, is fighting for his life in hospital in Omsk, Russia. Navalny became ill on the plane flying from Tomsk to Moscow. Those close to him are suggesting that the politician may have been poisoned. This would be yet another attempt on his life, as last year he was also poisoned. Three years ago, an unknown perpetrator poured acid on his face. Alexei Navalny's spokesperson, Kira Yamish, announced the politician's poisoning on Twitter today. Navalny was taken to hospital in Omsk. According to Yamish, the opposition figure and Putin critic is unconscious. The information was confirmed by his doctor. This morning, Navalny was flying back to Moscow from Tomsk. During the flight, Navalny felt ill. The plane quickly landed in Omsk. Alexei is suffering from toxic poisoning. We're now in an ambulance on our way to the hospital. I can confirm that the patient is at our hospital. He is in a serious condition, on a respirator, but his condition is stable. This is a possible diagnosis. We're trying to eliminate or confirm it. The treatment process is continuing. Videos which appeared on the internet showing Alexei Navalny being taken out of the plane and escorted to an ambulance by emergency services have aroused much speculation about the possible poisoning of the leading Russian opposition figure. According to the Interfax agency, Navalny's preliminary diagnosis indicated that he is suffering from poisoning with an unidentified psychodysleptic drug. However, the politician's doctor did not confirm this. Poisoning is one of the possible causes of the deterioration of the patient's condition. But beyond that, there can be many other reasons that lead to the same clinical symptoms. One of the videos Posted online shows Alexei Navalny drinking tea in a cafe at the airport. According to Kira Yamish, the tea may have been poisoned. We suspect that Alexei's tea was poisoned. This is the only drink he drank this morning. The doctors say that the toxins work faster when added to a hot drink. The footage from the cafe at the airport in Tomsk is being inspected. About a year ago, Alexei Navalny was taken to one of the Moscow hospitals with symptoms of a severe allergic reaction and then arrested by the police. Navalny himself did not rule out the possibility of poisoning at that time. The Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko has accused the West, including Poland, of spreading chaos in the country. The state prosecution serves is investigating the activities of participants in anti-government protests. Demonstrations continue across the country, although yesterday evening's demonstrations attracted fewer people than in previous days. A group of citizens of the Belarus Republic has declared the creation of a coordination council, one of the goals of which is a transfer of power. They plan to create a political body that should undertake the transfer of power from the current head of the country. Creating such a body is not allowed by law. Their activity is unconstitutional. A group of citizens who understand the invalidity of their actions has proclaimed leaving the council and not agreeing with its activity. Creation and activity of such a council is designed to seize the state authority as well as damage the national security of Belarus. In view of the above-mentioned facts, we have opened a criminal case according to Rule 361 of the Belarus Republic. 
в связи с изложенным. The Coordinative Council was founded on the initiative of Lukashenko's main opponent in the recent presidential elections, Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya. Yesterday, the council chose its presidium consisting of eight members, including Nobel Prize winner Svetlana Alexievich and the former Minister of Culture, Pavel Datushuko. The council's main goal is to conduct a peaceful transfer of power. According to its members and many Belarusians who have been protesting since the 9th of August, the presidential elections were rigged and they should be rerun. According to the Central Electoral Commission, Alexander Lukashenko won with 80% of the votes. Lukashenko himself has emphasized that the council's only goal is to gain power. In one of the largest demonstrations in recent years, hundreds of thousands of Argentinians took to the streets to protest against President Alberto Fernandez and Vice President Cristina Kirchner, who many say is a person actually running the country. The reasons for the demonstrators' anger was the announcement by the government that the coronavirus lockdown will continue and judicial reform, which is seen as an attempt by Kirchner to avoid prosecution. The huge crowds were expressing their dismay at the Fernandez government. Their grievances include the state of the economy, lockdown measures across the country and proposed judicial reform. We are against a judicial reform which is against democracy. We want the government to respect the separation of powers and not to create laws so that those who are corrupt have immunity. Let them pay for what they did. We want a free country that is good for our children so they don't have to leave the country. Latin America's third largest economy was already in deep crisis before the pandemic hit. The health crisis is now expected to shrink the economy by around 12% this year, driving millions into poverty and leaving almost six out of every 10 children and adolescents below the poverty line, United Nations data show. I am here because it is a complete movement against institutions, all that we are going through. They can't go back destroying the country. Unfortunately, that is what they are doing. I don't want to live in Venezuela. I am Argentinian and I want my country to be good. Some of the protesters also believe that there were sinister motives behind the continued coronavirus lockdown. I don't think President Alberto Fernandez is being honest. There is something behind this, the fact that our country has had the longest quarantine. As of Monday, Argentina has reported nearly 295,000 coronavirus cases and over 5,700 deaths. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us to the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.